Cool. So welcome to our panel discussion today about the legend Morphia and Bosky integration. I think you heard already a lot about it in Gab's intro remarks and also the one from John Matson today. Um, so I'm Bika and I, I'm a vice president in uh, data engineering at Goldman Sachs and I'm a product manager for the legend stack. And I have the pleasure today to moderate an awesome panel with amazing people and technologists, uh, with Mark uh, from Microsoft, uh, Pierre from Goldman, and Stephen from Morgan Stanley. Um, and maybe without further ado, let me actually hand it off to Pierre to start introducing himself. Hi. So I uh, am Pierre Debelen. I manage the platform team uh, within data engineering at Goldman Sachs. Uh, I've been at Goldman for 15 years and uh, four years as managing director. Uh, during this time, I moved uh, in different uh, you know, areas of the business, uh, moving from compliance technology to operations technology to core engineering. Uh, but while I was doing that, I always worked on data and how to make sure that people can access data more easily, retrieve data more easily uh, in the firm. And moving around in the organization gave me, gave me a really good way to understand the pain that people have, you know, with different use cases, different, you know, like problematic that people have, whether they're on the, on the operation side, or the front office side, on the back office in compliance. Uh, so that helped actually refine this platform that, you know, we built, we built for time. Uh, and, you know, one of the highlights of my career was last year when uh, we decided to open source the platform and contribute to the code to the Finos Foundation. Uh, and yeah, so that's, uh, that's me. Awesome, thanks Pierre. So uh, Stephen, why don't you introduce yourself next? Hi, Stephen Goldbaum from Morgan Stanley. Um, I have a similar trajectory. I have been in a, a lot of different positions in a lot of different um, business units uh, across Morgan Stanley and even before then. And so uh, very similar experience a little bit more on the application side in terms of dealing with the business users, um, giving the business users confidence that we're programming what they expect us to program and that the application is doing what they expect the application to do. Um, so I did get a lot of experience with across traders, across uh, data and, 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 and people that do need, need to manage data. Um, and that all culminated into Morpher in, in, in many ways, not, not just through myself, but with the experience of, of the rest of the team as well. Um, and again, I, very similar to Pierre, a highlight of when we open sourced it and contributed it to FinOS. Great, thanks Steven. And then Mark, last but not least, you wanna introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, uh, my name is Mark Marin. I'm from Microsoft Research. Um, slightly differently from the first two panelists. I have sort of been in the academic track uh, for my entire career. Um, you know, in the compiler runtime space, I've done a lot of work on optimization, garbage collection, debugging, uh, program analysis tools. Recently, I got really interested in digging into programming language design and verification methodologies. And really, the crux of the problem is how to make sure that your program is actually doing what you think it's doing, verifying that that's either the case or if it's not, that sometimes happens with developers, coming up with a, you know, an input that shows you why your program actually is, has a bug and, and allowing you to fix it quickly. So that's really what, what I was interested in doing and it aligned really well with the concerns uh, you know, of uh, Morphia and Legend and it was really exciting to be able to come and work in an industry where they really care about correctness and reliability and work with some great people on some really cool technology. So I was really excited to be able to come and participate in this. Great, so all of you already hinted a little bit at the various projects uh, that you uh, either work on or brought into the Finos community. So let me start uh, by asking Pierre to tell us a little bit more about the Legend project. Yeah, well, so it's going to be hard for me to do a presentation at all, the great presentation that you guys did before uh, explaining the system and why it's cool. But I'm, I'm just going to speak a little bit about the name because, you know, Legend is kind of a tricky name. Like, it's, it sounds pretentious in some ways, but, and each time it's like the Legend of Legend, I hear a lot of weird stuff. Uh, but, you know, why, why we took Legend, okay? So uh, as you can, uh, may, may have seen at the present, uh, precedent presentation, 
the core of the system and the, the purpose of the system is to define more semantic uh, about data, is to build map, you know, and cartography of information that help actually uh, different data being produced in different parts of the organization be brought together, like bring this silo, bring relationship between information that we have behind. And you know, we found that actually having this information and this map of information that everyone can, can contribute to uh, help you know, define navigation um, of information, retrieving and navigate, navigating information for sure, also improve uh, data quality, as, as we saw a, a, little bit, a little bit earlier, but, um, and, and remove um, the duplication of information because you have one place where you can find information in a, in a central way. So legend you know, is meant to evoke actually this kind of uh, description of information that uh, you know, help people understand the data they are working with. And the same way a legend help people understand uh, the symbol and notation of a map and, and, and a chart, uh, you know, the, the, the product is actually this kind of guide that helps you understand what's happening in, in the context of your organization. Yep, very interesting. And could you tell us a little bit more about the pure language and its capabilities in more detail? Yeah, so when it comes to pure, like because the system is really meant to uh, collaborate about definition of data and the way people work on data, um, when we, it came to pure, we had to look for a type system that, that um, helped communication. Um, so uh, what we did is that we took the UML uh, language because it has actually a graphical representation that really helped people collaborate and work uh, with each other. Uh, but when it came to uh, UML, um, as much as UML can define constraints with OCL, um, it's not really used a lot, but that's like a possibility of the language we found that it was not really possible to define data derivation, data queries, or data transformation. So, so we built our own language on top of UML to address actually these concerns. Um, so obviously now you can refine the semantic of the model with constraints, like because it's the same as OCL, but you can actually define derivation. And when we speak about derivation is how to build data on top of data. So I can, how can I create a little bit more information out of information that has already been modeled in the system? We can also define uh, data transformation. So when people want to actually build a model but transform to another model, all that using the same language. And you can do queries, you know, find quickly information out of your model and filter and retrieve information really fast. So now that's kind of the why we built the language and, and we had our own things. But the cool part, it's kind of the mind bending part and everyone makes fun of me, of me when I explain that, is that we build actually our model using the model itself. So pure, the language is defined using pure itself in a recursive fashion. So it's like um, it's like a, 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 it's it's a, it's a meta programming actually that we have in the environment, and why it's important, because because pure is modeled in itself, everything you can ask anything in the system what it is, and the system will tell you it is built this way, up to a recursion point where you know things are built with themselves, and that help actually have a, a full reflective language that can be used to transform actually. Uh, the language that you express information into other language, like let's say SQL or GraphQL or Protob for other things. So this kind of capabilities of you know, modeling the language with itself help actually transform the language into other language and start to enable execution to different uh, part of the, the, the system we work with in, uh, in, in, in our organizations. Sounds very interesting. Again, thank you, Pierre, for giving us a, yeah, a better overview of legend and the pure language. So, uh, Stephen, handing it over to you to um, explain a little bit more what Morphia is and how it relates to data models. Sure. So, Morpher is a project uh, centered around sharing business logic. Um, and so, what I mean by business logic is calculations, rules, Anything that the, the, the business thinks of when they think of an application, they're not thinking about execution and, and data flow and, and stuff like that. They're thinking about this is what the application should do. And so that's what I mean by business logic. Um, and the, the natural question is, well, why would we want to share business logic? Uh, I think the, probably the most obvious answer is risk. Every time we have to write business logic in code, we're 
creating risk because we're creating risk that we're doing it wrong and that we've missed something or we're rewriting a bit that, that you know, is, is, is less known. So every time we touch the business logic is risk. So when we talk about sharing, we're talking about sharing it across systems, but also across future technologies. So that if we do want to migrate technologies, we don't have to touch the business logic and risk that. We can maybe co-generate those tech to those technologies and make it execute that way. Um, and then we're also talking about sharing it across people. So one of the things that we want to do is increase the knowledge of what the application is supposed to do and what it is actually doing in production. And so we're, we're talking about visualization and anything we can do to make the users comfortable and understand what the application is doing and why it's coming to the conclusions that it's coming to. Um, and so the question it might be, well, what, how are you doing that? What, what is the way that we do that? So you'll probably hear us talk a lot about an IR, which is an intermediate representation, which uh, when we were thinking about doing this and how do we go about doing this, we were thinking, well, we want to put logic in a data format so that we can share it and we can create that ourselves or we can actually look into computer science where they've done this for decades and they've mastered it. And so we should probably use that instead. We should probably go use computer science for that. And so that's what, when we talk about an IR, that's what we're talking about, a, a, a data format for logic. Um, and then finally, I want to say that uh, Morpher is focused on integration. It doesn't define a, a language itself. It, it's happy to use other languages in the front end. We use an existing language. Um, we've now got Bosky and we've got uh, Pure and we're happy to, to, to have any other languages map into that, into that IR, just as long as we're saving that business logic. And we also want to integrate on the other side to say, well, we're not going to dictate what the execution platform is. We want to support different execution environments and paradigms. And, and really, the, the goal of Morpher here is to integrate all that and give it a single target so that we're not writing all kinds of tools across all kinds of different languages. We kind of kind of centralize on something. Great. Thank you for setting the stage on further integration that we can explore. Uh, so Mark, uh, last but not least, again, um, tell us more about Bosky and uh, what it can do to, um, for quality assurance. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> the Bosky language project sort of started out as just uh, kind of a broad question. And I, I work in uh, a group that has uh, some really excellent people that have done amazing work in sort of theorem proving, program verification, abstract interpretation, model checking, everything you could imagine about, you know, compilers, everything you could imagine about trying to reason about what a program does, whether it's to make it go faster, to find bugs, you know, all, all, uh, better memory usage, all sorts of things. And it was really interesting over the years talking with people, you know, and when they tried to write these techniques, you sort of had a, a beautiful core that really made sense and we were like, this should really work well. And then we'd go and we'd try and apply it to JVM bytecode, you know, that the intermediate representation for Java or the CLR bytecode, the intermediate representation for C sharp. And things would suddenly bog down and, you know, you weren't getting as great a results as you would really expect or want. And when talking with people, the same sort of things seem to come up over and over again that were causing these problems and preventing us from really getting the kind of great developer tooling and, and, and checking results that we wanted. And it kind of stemmed from the fact that these intermediate representations were designed kind of in the world where you were going from a source language like C Sharp and you were compiling down and down and down until you got to assembly language code. So they were really designed to make it easy to take these desugaring steps from a source language down to an intermediate representation that was easy to optimize for x86 or ARM or everything else. And now what we were trying to do is we were trying to build tools on top of this platform that wasn't really designed for it. And so there were a bunch of things that made sense if you're writing optimizing compiler that don't make sense if you're you know, trying to do a program verification. And so the question we had, and this was really a, a research question at that time, is is there something, is there a better way to do this, right? If we went and tried to design this intermediate representation rather than for compilation to design it for developer tooling, could we make different choices? Could we build a different representation? And could we build one that actually supported the needs of these tools much better? 
right? And so that was sort of the first part is like reimagining this particular component and what it should look like for that. Um, the second part was, well, suppose you built this intermediate representation and you could do amazing analysis on it. Can you actually then connect it back to a surface programming language that developers would want to use? Or is it just so you know, hideous and painful that no one would ever write code that, that targeted it? So we sort of had two components to this, this project. What does this intermediate representation look like? And then how do you build a programming language that targets it and is designed to make verification and checking easy? And so we, you know, we spent a couple years working on this. Um, it was great, again, working with the Morphier folks. We bounced some ideas off them. We tried various iterations. We had some thoughts that were good ideas, some thoughts that were bad ideas. So we did, <laughs> you know, as research, there's a fair bit of experimentation there. But in the end, we've really come out with something that I'm, I'm very excited about in terms of the IR that we have and how we've been able to integrate it uh, with, with Morphier and then with Legend as it goes through the Morphier stack that allows us to do some amazing things in terms of program reasoning and, and we'll see in this demo, but really allows you to have assurance that your software is doing what you expect it to do, right? And actually proving that that is the case. Like I, I really liked in the intro, the statement that in this domain, getting the correct answer is important and having confidence in your answer is important, and that's what we really want to enable, is not just confidence because you passed unit test or confidence because you haven't had a bug report, but confidence because you have a principled logical theory about why an error doesn't occur or why your application does what you think it does. Um, so. Yep, awesome. Great, Mark, for uh, telling us more about Bosky here. And just real quick, because I cannot wait to see the, the action happening in the demo in a few minutes. Uh, Steven, could you just, um, I'm curious to learn more how this collaboration between the three of you came about. Like, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, it really came directly out of open source. So um, uh, Morpher and, and, and Legend and Pure were contributed to FinOS at roughly the same time. Um, and we immediately saw the synergies and, and were pretty eager to work with each other. And FinOS made that very easy to do, where normally it would, it would not have been easy to do at all. And then the fact that both of these, these applications are completely open source, so we can all go in and look at everybody else's code. And it's the same story with Bosky. As soon as we saw the open source announcement from Microsoft and we saw the synergies, we contacted Mark. And because that is purely open source, and our stuff was purely open source that just made the whole thing work very yeah. easily. Cool. Pia, yeah, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, no, like, so Finos is definitely a, 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 big, uh, a big player here in helping us work together. And it's really cool, actually, to be able to work across banks and Microsoft in a totally open fashion. There's one thing else is that um, when, when we started to speak to, to each other, uh, we pretty much are really like-minded in the way we think about uh, how to define information, how to define models, how you use an intermediate representation to be able to communicate and work uh, about code. And the, the, the complementarity was really interesting too, because as much as we really focus on data on the legend side, uh, you know, Morgan and Morphe are, are really focusing on business logic and uh, integration of more um, business representation. So it was really kind of clear that we could make them work together to have a, a complete offer about something that can address cross compilation and cross execution on different targets. Uh, but, you know, including data and including business logic together. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I don't know about you, but I want to see this integration happening in action now. Um, and so, Daitana, if you don't mind playing the video. Um, Hi. Yeah. Welcome to the demo for the Legend Morpher Bosky integration project, where we enable compile time through improving feedback and logic visualization for Legend Pure functions, powered by Morgan Stanley Morpher and Microsoft Bosky. My name is Jiang Lai Zhang. I'm a software engineer at Goldman Sachs in the Legend team who developed integration. In the first part of the demo, we would like to show you the meta model diagram of Morpher IR's type system, modeled and created in Legend. Here, an IR stands for an intermediate representation. For Morpher, the IR is in JSON format, which is defined and published as a null language package. This was an essential step as part of the integration project because it enables us to generate Morpher IR from Legend Pure code, which is needed to visualize functions and receive feedback on the function logic from Bosky. Coming back to the diagram, 
Each node in this diagram is a legend parent model or class and represents a type in Warfare IR's ML model. Each arrow represents an inheritance and each line represents an attribute relationship. This diagram, therefore, is a clear picture of the structure of any target Warfare IR to which we transform legend pure objects to. Pia, you want to comment on what we just seen? Yeah, no, so, so it illustrates a lot the metamodeling capabilities that I was speaking about before. Like um, the first thing we do when we integrate with technology uh, in, in Legend is to model the technology itself. So the same way, you know, we expect people to model business concepts, trades and others. At the technology level, we have exactly the same strategy of modeling the technology, what it represents and, and what it is. Um, there's another part which is really interesting here is that we use the transformation, transformation language to be able to uh, you know, go from an IR to an IR. So the same way we have the uh, Morphier IR, which uh, we just saw uh, just before, we have our own IR and we have a transformation language that can say, okay, how can I go from one to the other and transform? And the language is really terse actually, like the code actually to perform that is fairly, fairly, fairly light behind the scene. And uh, one thing I would add is that, um, you know, as much as we have Morphia and you saw Morphia, if you, look, if you go in our GitHub code, you will see the same thing about Java, you will see the same thing about GraphQL or SQL. So eventually, you know, the, the project would end up having a repository of technology expressed in a uniform fashion so that you can compare them or quickly understand them because they're all expressed in the same language and in, uh, in the same fashion. Great, so uh, now let's look at the second part of the demo video where we introduce Morphia. For the second part of the demo, we'd like to show you how we generate Morphia IR from a legend function and visualize its logical paths. Let's start with creating the function in legend. Please note that I'm using a local deployment of the integration stack build from code available publicly on GitHub. We're also working on deploying this into the Phoenix environment. For clarity, I created a new legend project and workspace ahead of the demo to save us some time. In a new workspace, let's define the function representing the decision-making logic, which is helping a rental company anticipate how many items they will be able to rent out. We can do this both in the user-friendly form mode or in the text mode. Let's toggle to text mode to write down the function. Within the function, we define the local variable maximum allowed which is decided based on the ratio between the requested amount and the availability. We then decide the final rented amount based on the maximum allowed variable. The logic is quite easy to follow looking at the function described in Legend Studio. However, if users wish to visualize the function and the logic, there is now an opportunity to do so with the integration of Legend and the Morpher Visualizer. Let's now click on the Generation dropdown and select Morpher Type. This allows us to generate valid Morpher IR JSON code from the previously defined function in Pure. You can see the result displayed here on the right-hand side. Now we click on Visualize Generated IR button. We're taken to the Morpher IR Visualizer, where we can view the type structure and the logic of the function. Let's explore by first set availability to zero. We see the eventual outcome will be zero regardless due to the first conditional check. Now, if we change availability to 60, we see the ratio between requests and availability is below 0 0.5, and thus we return the amount of requests as the outcome. And now if we change availability to 40, maximum allowed becomes half the availability, and depending on whether we allow partial rentals, we return the maximum allowed amount or zero, since we can't fulfill the requests. As we can see, Morpher enables easy visualization of not only the function, but also the logical paths that can be taken with different inputs. Steven, do you want to comment on what we've just seen? Yeah, so this is a great example of, I think, what we were talking about in terms of confidence. This is, the, this is a, a custom-built UI, and the goal of this UI was to decrease the, uh, the feedback loop between IT and the business, uh, the business experts. And so I think you can imagine the business experts describing the logic, and this was generated completely. So there was no, um, you know, there's no extra coding to, to make this happen. So you can imagine a technologist sitting with the, the business expert, and they're describing the logic, and the, the, 
the coder is coding it down mm -hmm. and then displaying it in real time and saying, is this what you meant? And let's try out some, some values and see if this is actually what you meant. And this has proven to be useful. So um, it proves, proves to be useful in, in, in setting up and writing the code, but also in, in auditing the code after, you know, if, if the system comes to a result and the users wonder, how did we get there? Why did we uh, calculate that result? We can actually go back and introspect and use these same kind of tools to find out why the, the application made a decision at any point in time. Mm -hmm. Cool, great. So I think there's one last part of the demo video uh, where we now introduce Bosky. In the final part of the demo, let's see how the integration with Bosky enables through improving feedbacks for legend functions. Let's start by typing in a function with an issue. This time, we create a function using the user-friendly fork mode. Will Bosky be able to help us identify what the issue is? Again, we generate the Morpher IR. This time, we click on View Bosky Feedback button, and we're taken into a web app called Linta that we created for displaying Bosky through improving feedback on the right-hand side, we have the generated Morpher IR, while on the left upper corner, we have the corresponding pure source code from which we generated the IR. And on the left bottom corner, we have the feedback from Bosky, which indicates a zero division error in our function. Wow, now we know the issue. We can also see that in between lines of the pure code, we highlight the error in code section. To give a better glimpse what we can do with Bosky feedback, let's redefine the function now with implicit zero divisions First, let's create a function with a problematic expression to be evaluated. Again, we see the highlighted code with potential zero division detected by Bosky. Let's also try adding one other variable and place it in the divider. We can see that Bosky gives feedback for the potential zero division for the variable. Now, as a responsible legend modeler, knowing we have a potential issue, let's fix the zero division. Let's redefine the function with a conditional at first, checking whether the divider is greater than zero. Now, if we ask Bosky what it thinks, we see there's no problem now. Hooray! Just to close the loop, let's see how we can use Bosky with the previously defined rental example, but with an issue in the function. We start with the exact same rental function defined previously, but remove the zero check for the divider. And let's check out the Bosky feedback. We see that a potential zero division is detected and is highlighted in our pure code. That concludes all three parts of our demo. As we can see, Legend Pure just became even more powerful with the integration with Morpher and Bosky, which enables us easy visualization of the logical paths and compile time through improving feedback. Thank you for your attention. Great. So wanted to just give like one more chance for Mark to comment on, on what we've just seen. Sure. Well, that's dangerous because this is where I get really excited. Yeah, we have can, to be. I can uh, talk a lot about that. Yeah, exactly. Um, you have about 30 seconds. 30 seconds. To do okay. That. The, the quick one. Maybe maybe at 45. <laughs> uh, but so so yeah. This so this is really cool. And I think um, what we do just at a very high level is we take the semantics or the meaning of the Morpher IR. We convert it into a formula in first order logic. And we use a state-of-the-art theorem prover developed at Microsoft Research, Z3, to actually look at this logical representation of the program and build a proof that that div by zero error can never happen, right? Now, you might be wondering, like, isn't this kind of like using a sledgehammer to crack a walnut, right? They're, 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 if, if it's div by zero, there are other techniques you can use that are less heavyweight than this theorem prover. But I think the um, uh, rental example is, is a great one because not only does this technique work for standard runtime errors like div by zero or invalid cast exceptions, 
But if you start wanting to assert the correctness of your program somehow and add user-defined assertions, like in the rental example, I might want to say that if I have a rental order come in, my response will, always, will only be accept if I have enough uh, surfboards or whatever in my inventory to fulfill that uh, rental order, right? And as that user-defined check, we can still encode that in first-order logic. We can still put that through the Serum Theorem Prover, and then we can still guarantee that your code implements that correctly, and that assertion will never be violated. Mm -hmm. So this really allows you to start thinking about what do you mean in your code, and then verifying that that actually holds, or you know, as we saw before, actually finding, a if there's a bug, what that bug is so you can quickly fix it, and then have confidence that not only did you, you know, um, do code reviews and unit tests, but you really got this deep, fundamental assurance that your software does what you expect. Mm. Yeah, great. So I think to wrap up the panel discussion today, maybe in one sentence from each of you, how do you see this collaboration going on in the future? Steven. Uh, I, I see this as part of a, an ecosystem that uh, will just keep building and growing. Mark? Uh, for me, well, you know, uh, we have a lot of engineering work to do to make sure things work beautifully all the way up. Like I mentioned, this started as an academic project. And we're really excited. It works, so we're switching to engineering mode, and it's time for me to fix bugs. <laughs> <laughs> and Pierre? Yeah, we'll fix bugs too. But like, uh, w w what's really interesting for me is that many times when we deployed Legend at Goldman, uh, you know, in order to source data, people came many times and say, "Oh, what about writing more business logic?" Like um, in in the context of, uh, you know, so, some some um, some regulation and things like that. And I see that as an opportunity to start actually writing this business logic and have, you know, all the power of the theorem improving and uh, all the power of the you know, like the, the Morphia capabilities in using code paths to, to help users start to go beyond fetching data and actually writing business logic in production. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, me too. Awesome, then thank you uh, all of you to, to join us and of course the audience. Yeah.